Hello everyone. Uh, if you're new to the series, my name is Jason. Uh, if you're a returner, welcome back. And to everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. I usually like to start with a little quarantine update. Uh, this is day nine for me of working from home, part of a shelter in place, um, also just part of uh, staying safe. Uh, this is my little apartment. Um, you're most likely also quarantined from home and I hope you're staying safe as well. Um, some changes since the last time uh, I recorded. Uh, you might notice I am using a different camera right now. Uh, that's because I don't actually have a proper webcam. Um, I'm on my desktop computer. Uh, last time I used a uh, Microsoft Connect sensor and kind of um, worked that into, uh, into a webcam and used that. But it had some issues. The, the uh, videos were flipped, so I had to like flip them with software. Uh, I'm trying something different now. I'm using like, a, pho a photography camera. It's a Canon DSLR. Uh, I'm doing something similar. I'm uh, going into the live view, capturing it, um, and then turning that into a virtual webcam. Um, not ideal, um, but I mention it because you know webcams are extremely important these days. Um, unfortunately, if you're looking for a new one, they're they're sold out everywhere. Um, but that's just my little example of learning to work kind of work with what I have, and I, we're all in the same boat, uh, and we're all doing the same thing. Um, <clears throat> so that's that's my little update for today. Uh, let's move on to today's topic, which is all about reading and writing. Uh, it's probably not what you think, um, but instead of just telling you, let's go ahead and watch this video from Steven to find out what I mean. Uh, full screen, let me go ahead and switch scenes, and let's watch. You may have noticed that I am using a webcam today, something that we have all recently learned is a crucial piece of quarantine technology. We'll uh, I'm going to stop right there. By the way, if you're new, I, I will be pausing the video and stopping to comment on some things. Um, yeah, like I just mentioned, a webcam, crucial piece of tech. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but Steven's uh, audio is out of sync. Um, it's I think it's delayed. Um, so I'm going to use that opportunity to fix this later in the video. Um, there's some moments where it gets better. Um, but uh, I'll fix it later in the video, and I'll even relate it to our topic of the day. Um, <clears throat> also, um, if you're interested more about uh, uh, about the tech and software options for, for streaming and video conferencing and just staying in touch with friends and family, I do talk about that in our first video if you haven't seen that. Uh, all right, let's see what else Steven has to say. I'm back here, but first, let's go on a visual journey. This was my office. Also my office. The weekend before the quarantine started. Lindsay and I came to pick up some <laughs> There's my desk. Things. <laughs> I want you to notice the paper on the walls. Notice the writing surfaces. The whiteboards. Notice the conference tables. More places where we can write. I want to point out that a company that makes software has an office full of places to write stuff that isn't software. If you want to understand both how software is helping us through COVID-19 and also what software may need to be built in order to overcome the challenges that we're currently facing, the key is to start with what software is. I've always told my students, if you want to understand how to code, first unlearn what writing is and then relearn it. There's a much broader definition of writing out. Um, Stephen just mentioned a broader definition of writing. I'll, I'm going to use that moment to let's, uh, I know he's going to get into uh, um, like a broader definition, how it applies to uh, computer science and just about everything. But let's go ahead and see if we can Google like a broader definition of writing. So uh, let's go ahead and type define writing. And this is absolutely something you can do when watching our videos. Just pause and uh, search for something. Let's go straight to the Merriam-Webster definition. And we have the act or process, uh, process of one who writes. Um, and that's not what we want. That's, that's um, very defined. We want something broad. So I like this third definition here, a style or form of composition. Um, now let's, let's go ahead and dig into a uh, definition of composition. I'll just go ahead and open a new tab. Search that. Um, 
active process of composing. Now we might think of you know composing um, a piece of writing or composing music. Uh, here's one, uh, writing music. But this definition I like: an in intellectual creation. Now it's referring to writing or music, but I think a broader definition would be any intellectual creation, right? Like maybe composing a game or uh, a, a, you know a piece of art or something like that. Um, so if we put these two together, we have a style or form of um, of uh, creating an intellectual creation, right? I think that's that's pretty broad. Let's uh, see if it fits into what Stephen has in mind. There, this video is a piece of writing. This cat inside the video, that itself is a piece of writing. This piece of paper is a piece of writing. This file on my GitHub repository is a piece of writing. What I am asking you to do is to throw out your old definition of writing. You know, the one that your grade school teachers put into your brain. The one that restricts writing to what you write with your hand on paper and what you type into a word processor like Microsoft Word or Google Docs. What I'm asking you to do is adopt something much closer to the definition that computer scientists have when they say things like reading and writing data, or reading and writing to a file, or reading and writing to memory, or to a disk, or to cache, or reading and writing to a variable. Coders use those terms in a much more general way because we're talking about information and its storage. Can you write a PowerPoint deck? Yes. Can you write music? Yes. Can you write a video game? Yes. Can you write a video? Yes. And I don't just mean the script, I mean the video itself. I mean this exact thing that you're watching. I um, this exact thing that you're watching, this video. Um, I'm going to use this time to, to fix that audio sync I mentioned. Um, so I'm, I'm watching this video and, and, um, and you're watching through a recording um, of my screen. Now this is a, I'm watching this video with VLC, which is a nice piece of software developed by a team of developers. Um, what's nice is it has all these options to help um, modify the video in real time. And so I'm going to use... I'm actually going to write a command into this program um, uh, using, uh, and in this case, it's just gonna be, I'm going to write a command by pressing either J or or K, and that lets me change the audio delay um, of the video. So I'm gonna actually going to delay this about 200, right? And what I'm doing is writing this command, which will tell VLC to write out the video. Actually, VLC tells the computer to write out the video in a different way, in, in this case with the audio delayed 200 milliseconds. Uh, let's go ahead and see how we did. I wrote it partially. Hey, that with looks pretty script good. That I typed with my hands, partly with storyboards that I wrote in my notebook or storyboards that I wrote on index cards. I'm writing using my actions of my body right now. They're getting fed into this device, you know, the webcam. And I'm writing using my voice recorded by this device right here. And I write an animation. Yes. Um, yeah, I like those examples. Let's let's try one of our own. Um, uh, he's focused on writing, but I'd like to bring reading back in. So let's do a reading and writing example. And I think it's important to add that... Um, um, the who the reading and writing is done from is also important. And like let's uh, in this case, I am writing into the computer by moving my mouse, um, and the computer is reading my mouse, and then the computer is writing the mouse cursor onto the screen, and I can go one step further where I am reading the mouse cursor with my eyes, and I can see where it is on the screen. Um, yeah, that's, that's a little fun example. You can look around the room where you are right now and try to come up with your own example. Now let's go ahead and continue with this video. And I want to point out that that's what I'm doing when I code in, say, Scratch. I create one piece of writing over here, but then when I press this button, an animation begins over here. And 
That is how you write an animation in Scratch, by writing code that writes the animation. Is that weird? Yeah, it is. It's also cool. Code is a form of writing that produces other writings. Your writings can write. It's meta writing. Now, if you've never heard... Um, meta writing. Hey, I think I have a good example for that. I'm going to... Um, so meta writing, like you said, it's writing code that writes code. And you can even go further that writes code. And um, let's go into... Uh, yeah, um, to Udemy. Um, uh, so we have uh, Udemy is a place where you can share courses, um, and we have some courses on Udemy. <clears throat> and what's nice is Udemy lets me write curriculum with this online kind of editor. So I can write curriculum, I can write lessons, I can write assignments. And here's an assignment for a coding exercise. This is actually from the last last video or the last section. Um, and here I'm writing, I can write the solution, um, but the neat part is I can write this evaluation file. Now this is a piece of code that I wrote um, that is used to check a piece of code that the student will write and submit. Uh, and beyond that, um, it even there's a piece of instruction here that I wrote that tells the website to write out a message in case the... Uh, um, student's answer is incorrect. Now, right now, it, it's combined with this. The message is div should be spinning by five degrees each interval. Try again. All right. And then let's, let's go ahead and check out what this does. I'll, I'll go to the student preview here. Uh, let me go ahead and copy the solution. There's a solution for video one's assignment. Um, if I just hit check solution right now, it should give me that customized message. There it is. Div should be spinning by five degrees each interval. Try again. And I'll go ahead and put the correct solution and go ahead and check again. So I've in this curriculum writer, I've written a uh, written code in the writer, um, and that code checks uh, a code that the student writes in, and then it even tells the the uh, website to write out a custom message to the student when they get it wrong. Um, so there's my meta writing example for you. Let's go ahead and continue with Steven's video. Coding explained that way before, that's because most people don't explain it that way. But why they don't, I'm not sure, because it's literally the first lesson for almost every coder. What do you do? You write a program that writes hello world. You write a program that writes. From day one, you meta write as a coder. <laughs> Who's that? It also makes coding, hands down, and I'm not exaggerating, the most complicated form of writing there is. The levels don't even stop at one. Once you are able to write something that writes something else, you know what can happen. That thing that you wrote to write something can write something else, which can write something else, which can write something else. Do we do that? Yeah, yeah, we do a lot. <laughs> it's a great place to stop. Um, yeah, we're gonna finish this video in, uh, in part two. Now, um, if you're on Udemy, there are some assignments below for you. Uh, for everyone else, thank you for watching, and we'll continue in part two.